Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this video I build a simple lift for my log splitter. Having a having a firewood processor is great, but I still have plenty of big rounds that are really hard to deal with. Normally I would try to put them on the splitter with the grapple or something like that and it was always a task. So my goal with this was just to make it so that uh, I could lift the piece of wood with the return stroke of the ram. Uh, there's, there's a bunch of videos. Look around on YouTube. There's a bunch of videos of people build them. Uh, Use of cables, stuff like that. Uh, mine is going to lift from the butt end of the splitter, not from the side. So it's a little... It's a pretty simple design, and I just kind of winged it as I went. Uh, there was two tabs on the tank, I'm guessing for possibly mounting fenders. I used that to mount my first bracket. Uh, my next my bracket towards the inside, there was these two bolts that went to the tongue. I just had to flip them around so that I could bolt a piece of C-channel to that to mount my bearings. I had these leftover pillow block bearings from the processor build, so they seem probably overkill, but it would work out good for having a place for the table to rotate. I uh, had to space the one out by the tire up where tubing just to even it out and I set them back far enough that it would clear the, the axle would clear the breather so it'd still be able to check the oil level and fill it. Uh, here I'm just making, I'm going to have to fill the gap in between the table and the beam. So I'm making brackets to use the old table off the splitter. And I didn't, if I needed to put this all back to the way it was, I, I fairly easily can. So that's why I'm just bolting it on instead of welding everything together with that. In the back, there was two other holes. I just put bolts through and then welded nuts to the bracket. Uh, this is the piece to fill in that gap between the table and the beam. A piece of welding here is from from the lift down to the axle. 
uh, I wanted two pieces straight up in and I, I want a bunch more pieces in just to brace it up This is the start of the foot part of it. Some forethought, I would have made that piece all go all the way across, but like I said, I just kind of started winging it, cutting stuff, and welding it in. Uh, this piece will go from the axle down to the back side of the foot just to brace that up and I think I put two pieces in one off that far piece that comes out put one in the middle to strengthen it definitely leery about welding with the engine there and the gas tank I covered it up luckily nothing nothing occurred but it was definitely, definitely a little scary to have gas that close to welding I mainly mainly just tacked everything and I take it off later on to weld it completely This will be my kind of my latch handle. There's an old basin wrench that it broke. Um, basically, this will be so that I can lock the table in the up position so that it's not going back down when you do the split. Now, uh, the piece that the handle goes into, I made off camera. I thought I filmed it, I didn't. Uh, it's just half inch schedule 40 pipe and then I put a groove in it for when it's in the lock position and then just a small indent you could keep it in the unlock position. Here I'm just welding in the stop for when the table is in the lock position so it has something to catch on. And then this piece I made is basically to retain the spring so that handle is spring loaded. Make it a little easier to operate. the brace because this is where the chain will attach down to the axle to brace that up and then for the piece that will pull the chain I just use some angle iron uh, it's basically long enough that it won't interfere with the split and then I just welded that to the wedge head
So the end of the chain at that is just a hook. So that way I can unhook it. And then it'll be attached at the other end and it'll just stay on the table. So I took the assembly off, finished welded it, and painted it as well since my splitter is mainly something that stays outside and gets covered up. So these were a bunch of logs from, uh, you can see a barn in the background, well, you used to not be able to see that, that's actually across the road. There was a bunch of trees out in the front of our property that the power company came in and cut down. Uh, so, a lot of them were really goofy lengths of cut, and, and there was these few that are they're just too big for the processor, so... Uh, but this is my first lift, first log on it, round on it. Uh, this is some really dry locusts, which I probably could have lifted by hand. Uh, this locust gets this dry, it's, it's pretty light. Uh, the rest of this is maple. I think it's maple. Some sort of maple from what I understand. Uh, even these rounds, probably 16 inch, they were they were a little much for me to have to pick up. So having this lift was definitely made it a lot easier. And this one, I'm not even sure how big the round is. But even with that rot, a little bit of rot in the middle, this thing was, this thing was incredibly heavy. A lot of times I'll either, stuff like this I'd try to cut in half or, like I said, I'd try to get it up on the splitter with a grapple or I just wouldn't even bother with it. And at least with this lift, I can bother with it because you get a lot of wood out of uh, pieces this big. So it is nice to be able to handle them somewhat easily. It's still, it's still a lot of work, but uh, long-term goal, I want to build a vertical splitter. Uh, pretty much build something like the Easton Made Axis. I think that will be... Something that'll make splitting almost as easy as the processor makes cutting with pole wood. So uh, that'll be a long-term goal. Still got to recover from building the processor to begin with. So but hope you enjoyed it. Hope it gives you some ideas. Uh, please consider subscribing. Help me build the channel. And. We'll see you next time.